So hi, good afternoon. I'm Johnny Balmeo and I will be your clinical instructor for this subject, NCM 112. This is the continuation of our previous uh, discussion in oxygenation. So for today, our uh, agenda, we will have an introduction to oxygenation. We will also have a discussion regarding the factors that affect the oxygenation. And then later on, we will have a demonstration of administering or giving the oxygen via nasal cannula or via mass. So without further ado, let's start with the introduction. Let's talk about the oxygen. So we are all familiar that oxygen is a clear, odorless gas that constitutes uh, approximately 21% of the air that uh, we breathe in. And it is also necessary for the proper functioning of all living cells, and including us as a human being. The absence of oxygen may lead to cellular death or even the tissue or worse, the organism death. So the delivery of oxygen and removal of carbon dioxide, it requires the integration of several systems. Okay, it includes the hematologic system, cardiovascular, and also the respiratory system. All these three are really important okay, when it comes in the oxygenation. So let's start first with the respiration. So when we say respiration, this is actually the process of gas exchange, the exchange, the exchange of the oxygen and then the carbon dioxide. Okay, between the individual and then the environment. And it involves uh, four components. The first one is what we will call the ventilation or the breathing. Second, we, what we call the alveolar capillary gas exchange. The third one is the transport of oxygen and carbon dioxide between the tissue and then the lungs. Then last is the movement of oxygen and carbon dioxide between the systemic capillaries and then the tissues. This one is what we call the systemic diffusion. Okay, to simplify everything, okay, may kita nyo rito, okay, the four processes of the respiratory system, the pulmonary ventilation, alveolar gas exchange, transport of oxygen and carbon dioxide, and then the systemic diffusion. Sige, uh, let's try to uh, simplify everything here. So when we say ventilation or breathing, this is as simple as this. This is the respiration, the inhalation, and then the exhalation. So once you inhale, you are actually uh, putting or placing an oxygen in your body. When you say exhalation, this is the removal of carbon dioxide inside your body. Okay, as simple as that. That is what we call the ventilation or breathing. The second um, component is the alveolar capillary gas ex exchange. So when we say alveolar capillary gas exchange, there was actually some exchange ng um, oxygen and carbon dioxide. As you can see, as you can see in this uh, GIF or GIF, these are red blood cells tong ikot na to sa may alveoli. Okay? And they are actually carrying, as you can see in the picture, they are carrying the, those blue dots. And these blue dots are the oxygen. Okay? Ganun ang ginagawa ng RBC okay, sa may alveoli. So, once na pumasok yung carbon di uh, oxygen in the alveoli, the RBC will then take those oxygen and then we'll transfer it uh, sa may different parts of the body. Okay? So this process actually involves diffusion of oxygen and carbon dioxide okay, between the alveoli and then the pulmonary, pulmonary capillaries. So, paano ba nangyari dyan? For example, this is the alveoli and this is the venous blood. Okay? Si alveoli has a higher concentration of oxygen than kay al, uh, venous blood. So, mangyayari dito, since mas mataas ang concentration na ito, okay, magkakaroon tayo ng process na tatawag natin diffusion. So, when you say diffusion, this is actually the exchange from higher concentration to lower concentration. Since alveoli has a higher concentration of uh, oxygen, okay, mangyayari dyan, pag, pum pag pumunta rito, dumikit si uh, venous blood, Okay, yung oxygen na nandito sa may alveoli, papasok ngayon dito sa may venous blood. As you can see here in the GIF. Okay? So, ang nangyayari sa RBC, ayun, kumukuha ng oxygen. Okay, this process is what we call the diffusion. Okay? Next one, the third one is uh, the transport of oxygen and carbon dioxide between the tissues and then the lungs. Okay, paano ba nangyayari rito? Okay, very self-explanatory lang naman to. Okay, so the transport of oxygen and carbon dioxide... Okay, so, si oxygen, it goes inside the cell and then deliver it 
to do the different parts of your uh, tissues okay? with the help of the hemoglobin. Okay? This blood now is called as oxyhemoglobin. Okay? They are carrying the blood with oxygen. Okay? Then the carbon dioxide from the tissues to the lungs for it to be expelled out. Okay? So meaning to say, si hemoglobin will carry the oxygenated blood. Okay, ita transfer na to doon sa yung oxygenated blood will be transferred to the different parts of the body, different tissues. And then from then on, it will carry the carbon dioxide na produce ng cell. Okay, then yung carbon dioxide na yon pupunta again doon sa may alveoli para ilabas. Ito, in the transport of oxygen and carbon dioxide between the tissues and the lungs, there are actually uh, several factors that, that uh, affect the rate of the oxygen. And these factors are the things that we need to consider. Number one, we have the cardiac output. Ito yung ilalabas na blood ni heart o yung pinapump niya. Okay, what else? We have the number of erythrocytes and the blood uh, hematocrit. It plays an important role because the more ang, kung marami ang uh, erythrocytes or RBC mo, kung enough or should I say nasa normal range yung RBC mo, then that's a good one. Merong magkikarry ng oxygen. What else? Uh, we all knew that in the RBC, and po yung hemoglobin. And hemoglobin carries the oxygenated blood. So, kung average ang number ng RBC and hematocrit, then that's a good one. Lastly, we have the uh, exercise. So, the more na nag exercise ka, the better. Okay, mas marami ang oxygen na pumapasok. And at the same time, you're not just exercising the muscles of your body, but at the same time, the alveoli. Okay? Uh, the fourth one, or should I say the last one, is what we call the systemic diffusion or the movement of oxygen and carbon dioxide between the systemic capillaries and then the tissues. Here, uh, there's a delivery of oxygen between the capillaries and then the tissue. So with the help of the capillaries, it deliver neto yung uh, oxygen sa different parts of the body. Okay? At the same time, some alveoli then, as you can see in the picture here, yeah, this one. Okay, and there's a capillaries here, some alveoli. Okay, and from here. They are transferring the carbon dioxide and then the oxygenation. Dito nagkakaroon ng gas exchange. Okay? So, kung natandaan ninyo, sa mga naging case natin, there's what we call the cyanosis. Okay, kung bakit nagkakaroon ng cyanosis, it's all because hindi po umaabot yung oxygen doon sa pangapat na component natin, which is the systemic diffusion. Okay? Since ang capillaries is maliliit na blood vessels, minsan hindi umaabot puro yung oxygen. So, ang nangyayari, nagkakaroon ng bluish discolorization. Okay, makikita natin yan sa mga lips and also at the same time sa uh, fingertips. Okay, kasi andito yung maraming capillaries. Okay, next. Okay, let's talk about the structure and process of the respiratory system. Okay, the structure of the respiratory system, familiar man tayo rito way back in our uh, anatomy and physiology. Okay, they facilitate gas exchange and protects the body from foreign matter such as particulates and pathogens. Okay, kaya nga minsan, kapag kumakain tayo, tapos yung pagkain, imbis na pumasok dun sa may esophagus, okay, nagkakamali ng pasok, mapasok sa may trachea. Okay, nakakalagpas sila dun sa may epiglottis. So, anong nangyayari? Sinasamid yung isang tao. That is actually a defense mechanism of our body to expel out those particulates, even the pathogens. Kaya inubo tayo. Okay, defense mechanism yun. Okay, there are factors that influence oxygenations. We are familiar with this one that may affect the cardiovascular system at the same time, the respiratory system po. Okay, itong mga factors na to, these are age, environment, lifestyle, health status, medications, and even stress. So, isa-isahin natin yan. So, in the age, okay, the developmental factors have important uh, influence when it comes in their uh, respiratory functions. So, at birth, uh, there's actually profound changes occur in the respiratory system. So, habang nagkakaroon ng edad yan, there might be some changes in the wall and air becomes more rigid and less elastic. Okay, yung chest wall. Okay, ang nangyayari dyan, minsan, nagiging shallow breather na yung mga matatanda. Okay, what else? The amount of uh, exchange air is also decreases. What else? Cap reflex and silly actions are decreases. Kaya nga yung mga matatanda, they are very prone when it comes in the flu. Okay. What else? Mucous membrane, they become drier and more fragile. Kaya yung mga ibang matatanda, konting alikabok lang, they are actually uh, cutting out. And then they are very prone, prone sa mga uh, uh, ubo, sa mga cold virus. Okay, next. Environment. 
okay, the altitude, heat, cold, air pollution, they may affect the oxygenation. And I already told you guys way back in our uh, health assessment na sa mga tao that are living in a higher altitude, okay, may possibility na iba yung number ng kanilang hemoglobin and hematocrit. Okay, I already told you the rationale behind that. And also, healthy people who are being exposed to air pollution, such as smog, what else, secondhand tobacco smoke, okay, they may experience some uh, stinging of the eye, headache, dizziness, and then, of course, coughing. Okay, ano sa mga tao who are living in a polluted area. Okay, what else? We have lifestyle, syempre. Okay, physical exercise or activity, it increases the rate and depth of the respiration. Hence, the supply of oxygen in the body also increases. Health status, syempre. If you are a healthy person, okay, that's a good one. Okay? If, there's a, if you are a healthy person, the respiratory system can provide sufficient oxygen to meet the body's needs. Okay? And also, some diseases of the respiratory system However, can adversely affect the oxygenation of the blood. If you have some sort of disease, okay, it, it may uh, decrease or should I say affect the oxygen of the body, especially kapag uh, you are TI, okay, the upper respiratory tract infection or even the lower respiratory tract infections, it decreases or it can really affect the oxygenation uh, of the blood in your body. Okay, next, we have medication. So there are actually wide variety of medication that can decrease the rate, the depth of respirations. The most common medications that uh, that may really affect the uh, oxygenations are benzodiazepines, sedatives, hypnotics, and mga anxiolytic drugs. Okay, for example, we have diazepam, also known as the Valium, the Lorazepam, Midazolam, barbiturates, mga narcotics po, morphines, may pwede din hydrochloride o yung tinatawag natin na Demerol, Okay, mga anxiolytic drugs, what else? We have anesthetic drugs. So, those kind of drugs really affects the respiratory functions. Okay, what else? So, we have stress. As you can see in the picture in the GIF here, okay, nakakaroon ng hyperventilations. Stress and stressors are encountered, okay? Both psychological and later on, the physiological response can affect oxygenations. Okay, huwag mo sabihin na it's all in the mind. Tandaan natin, mind plays an important role in the body. Okay, so if your mind has been triggered, okay, na-trigger yan, you've been stressed, or should we say depressed, anxious, okay, it can cause some hyperventilation in your body. Okay, some people may hyperventilate in response to stress. Okay, when this, and when this occurs, the PO2 rises and then the PCO2 may fall. Okay, yung oxygen pwedeng bumaba and then pwede rin naman tumaas yung carbon dioxide or vice versa. Pwedeng uh, tumaas si CO2 I mean, pwedeng tumaas si oxygen at pwede namang bumaba si CO2. Eh, dapat okay, there should be a balance. Okay, some conditions affecting the movement of air. I knew guys that you are already familiar with this one. Recap na lang bali to, no? So, Pag sinabi natin normal respiration, we call that yuk niya. Pagka naman takip niya, there's a rapid respiration. So, or mataas po yung uh, respiration, beyond normal or above normal. Pagka naman bradip niya, opposite po ito, below normal or abnormally slow respiratory rate. Okay? There's also what we call that apnea or the cessation of breathing or the absence of breathing. Okay, alam naman natin kung bakit nagkakaroon ng apnea. Okay, next, we, uh, let's talk about the hypoventilation. Okay, see, hypoventilation, it may lead to increased level of carbon dioxide in the body. This is what we call the hypercapnia or the hypercarbia. Okay, or the low level of oxygen or the hypoxemia. Okay, it's either slow or shallow breathing. Okay, paano ba yung ano, hypoventilation? Usually, makikita nyo to sa mga ano, under stress, or kaya anxious na mga client. Paano ba yan? Parang ganito lang yan, no? Okay, there's a slow, pwede rin naman nagkaroon ng shallow. Okay, paano yung slow na yan? Yung iba naman, shallow breathing. Okay? Ah, hindi masyadong maabot yung oxygen doon sa may alveoli. Okay, humihinga na siya papalabas. Okay, inhalation. Inhalation, shallow. So, nagkakaroon na ng exhalation before pa umabot yung oxygen doon sa may alveoli. So, ano nangyayari? 
So, tumataas po yung carbon dioxide sa may katawan. The other one is hyperventilation. So, hyperventilation is the increase of movement of air into and out of the lungs. Okay, this is actually, uh, paano kung nasabi ito? During hyperventilation, the rate and then the depth of respiration increase. So, mas marami po yung carbon dioxide na nai-eliminate. Okay, so mas marami yung lumalabas ng carbon dioxide during the hyperventilations. Okay, next. Other abnormal breathing patterns po, this is what we call the chain strokes respiration and then the biots respiration. So, pagka sinabi nating uh, chain stroke respiration, okay, it is actually marked by waxing and uh, waning of respiration from very deep to very shallow with short periods of apnea. Okay, paano ba yan? Okay, usually makikita nyo kasi ito sa mga ano, eh, matataas ang ICP or the intra intracranial pressure or drug overdosage, eh, parang ganito yan. Uh, very deep. And then, magiging shallow. And then, up niya. And then, bigla na namang very deep. And then, shallow. And then, up niya. And then, again. Okay, that is what we call the chain stroke respirations. Okay, usually, makikita niyo po ito sa mga matataas po yung ICP or the intracranial pressure. Okay, sa mga drug overdosage din, makikita niyo po yan. Then, we also have the biots respiration. Pa, paano naman yan? Si, siya, si Bayot's respirations, uh, eh, there's a shallow breaths and then it is being interrupted by apnea. Okay, shallow po yan. And then stop. And then shallow ulit. And then stop. Okay, that is the Bayot's respiration. Usually, makikita niyo po ito sa mga pasyente natin na mayroong problema with the central nervous uh, system. Okay, nagkaroon ng disorder with the CNS. Okay, doon yung makikita itong mga Bayot's respiration na ito. Okay, moving on. Uh, we have the ortopnia. I knew guys that you are familiar with this one. This is actually the inability to breathe easily. Not unless i re mo sila. Okay, or kaya naman, biglang umupo. Okay, nahirapang huminga. So, ang gagawin mo dyan, itatayo mo siya. Okay, that's what, that what we call the ortopnia. On the other hand, uh, this niya, from the word itself, difficulty of breathing. Okay, next, let's talk about oxygenations. So, when you say oxygenation, this is actually the addition of oxygen to any system, including the human body. Okay? Ito yung pag-add up ng oxygen. Okay? So, oxygenation may also refer to the process of treating the patient with oxygen. So, if we are treating a patient, gamit po ang oxygen, that is oxygenation. Or sometimes, it is a combination of medication or other substance with oxygen. With oxygen. Katulad, sa, katulad ng, sa may operating room. So, operating room, so sa may oxygen, okay, sa may oxygen, isinasama po doon yung uh, anesthetic drugs. Okay, yung ba naman, using the uh, EP tube, okay, may nakapasok po, okay, doon pinapadaan din yung anesthesia with the help, of course, of the oxygen. Okay, we call that the JETA or the General Endotracheal Anesthesia. Okay, next, let's talk about the oxygen therapy. So, si oxygen therapy, this is actually the treatment that delivers oxygen gas for you to breathe. Okay, kapag nahihirapang huminga, this is what you needed, the oxygen therapy. You can receive oxygen therapy from tubes resting in your nose, okay, by a mask, or the tube placed in the trachea, or windpipe. Okay, mami, I'll pakita ko sa inyo yung picture na yan. Because there are some people na mayroong pong problema, and they have to, uh, we have to insert okay, here, okay, a tube. Okay, later I'll discuss that. Okay, this treatment uh, increases the amount of oxygen to your lungs, receive and deliver to your blood. Okay. So, oxygen is being supplied in two ways. Okay, in the facility, okay, via portable system and via wall outlet. So, if the portable system, this is the cylinder or the tank. As you can see in the picture, these are the portable system. Okay, ito dinadala natin sa mga facilities. Okay, very normal po na makikita nito in the hospital. But nowadays kasi, there are, most of the hospitals, ang pinapractice na nila ay this one. Okay. This is the wall outlet system. As you can see in the picture, okay, sa na nakakabit po yung oxygen, dun na sa may wall. Okay. This one is much safer than the other one, itong cylinder or the uh, tanks or the portable uh, system. Okay. This one is a lot safer. Bakit? Okay. Meron na pong nagde-deliver ng oxygen. So, hindi na at risk yung patient na babagsakan. Hindi na rin po at risk yung wall or yung healthcare provider na mabagsakan at mag-carry 
ng mga oxygen tank. Okay, all you have to do is just to uh, plug this one, the oxygen, in the wall. Okay? All you have to do is just to put a humidifier device and also the this one, the autometer. Okay? What else? Okay, the dry gases dehydrate the respiratory mucous membrane. We are already familiar with this one. Okay? Ang oxygen po kasi kapag oxygen alone lang, it can uh, mix the respiratory system, the the nostrils, okay? Pwedeng mag-dry out po 'yan. So we really needed a humidifying devices. Okay? Kailangan ng humidifier sa ganun, ma-prevent natin yung pag-dry up ng mga mucus in our respiratory systems. Okay? The humidifying devices add water vapor to the inspired air. So thus, is an essential adjunct of oxygen therapy. Kaya hindi po mawawala po ito. Okay? The humidifier. Okay, what are the humidifiers? As you can see here in the picture, very common po na makikita nyo ng hospital, this one. Okay? These humidifiers prevent mucous membranes from drying and becoming irritated and loosen secretions for easier expectorations. Mas makakadali kasi eh. Lalo na kapag ang pasyente natin may problema sila. URTI or uh, lower respiratory tract infection, upper respiratory tract infection, mas madali po malusen up okay? yung secretions kapag ka meron tayong humidifier. Ito yung pinaka-common na makikita ninyo ay hospital. Pero meron din tayong ginagamit this one. Pre-pack po siya. All you have to do is just to remove the, uh, the cup and then insert it in the meter. Okay, next. Okay, we have the uh, flow meter. As you can see in the picture, ito po yung humidifier yung attach natin dito sa flow meter. Okay, this is the flow meter. Okay, the flow meter indicates the gas flow in liters per minute. Meron po yung mercury sa may loob. Okay, dito natin may adjust at malalaman kung ilan yung gas flow o yung oxygen flow na pumapasok dun sa may body ng pasyente natin. What else? This one is a gauge actually. Okay, as you can see this picture, this is a gauge para malaman natin gano'ng kadami yung oxygen na meron dun sa may oxygen tank. Ganun din sa may uh, wall system. What else? Okay, let's talk about the oxygen delivery system. So, we have the low flow and high flow system. Ano ba yung pinagkaba ng dalawa na yan? Okay. So, si low flow administration, low flow system or the low flow administration devices, it includes the nasal cannula, the face mask, okay, the oxygen tent, this one. This is the oxygen tent. And we also have this one, the transtracheal catheters. Okay. So, meron po dyan na tracheostomy. Okay. Sa may trachea, merong butas doon. Doon yung pinapasok itong catheter na ito, nang sa ganun, dito may deliver yung oxygen. Sir, bakit po hindi doon na lang sa may mouth or sa may nose? The problem is, pag itong pinadaan, okay, hindi po kaya ng pasyente. They have a problem. Kaya nga, nagkaroon ng butas dito eh, nagkaroon ng tracheotomy eh. Nang sa ganun, dito na po sila hihinga. Kaya dito rin natin padadaanin yung oxygen nila. Okay? Again, guys, it depends on the order of the doctor kung ano ang gagamitin natin sa may low-flow administration devices. Kung nasal, nasal cannula, face mask, or the transtracheal catheter, or this one, okay, the oxygen tent. Okay? It depends on the order of the doctor, pero minsan kasi, uh, since we are capable of deciding naman kung anong gagamitin, kahit tayo mag-decide na lang, and then let's uh, talk to the doctor na, ito po yung ginamit namin, especially in the emergency cases. Okay? Are we going to wait for the doctor's order? Doc, ano po bang gagamitin namin? Face mask, face, uh, face mask ba, or nasal cannula? Okay, minsan tayo na mag-decide kung kaya naman natin. So, this is the low-flow administration devices or the low-flow system. Okay, how about the high-flow system? Kay high-flow system naman, ito po yun. Okay. Si high-flow si, uh, high system, it uses a venturi mask with, with uh, large bore tubings. Okay. This is the venturi mask. And as you can see, it uses a large bore tubings. Meaning to say, mas marami po ang oxygen na may bibigay kay patient gamit ang high-flow system. Uh, contrary dito kay low flow administration devices or the low flow system, okay, konti lang mo ibibigay ng oxygen. Okay, in the high flow system, we are using this device, the Venturi mask. Okay, sa isahin po natin. The nasal cannula. As you can see in the picture, ito yung pinaka-common na makikita ninyo in the hospital. Eh. Okay, the nasal cannula or the nasal prongs. This is the most common, inexpensive device that used to administer oxygen. And as for me, this is the most, most convenient uh, cannula. Or should I say device? Bakit? The patient can able to speak freely. They can able to it also with the with um, cannula attached to them. 
Unlike po dito kay face mask. Kay face mask, syempre, hirap magsalita ang pasyente at, at hindi rin po syempre makakakain. Well, of course, there's a pros and cons that we need to consider for this one. Okay? Katulad dito kay nasal cannula. Kay nasal cannula, about uh, 20, 20 to 40% lang ang may, may bibigay ng oxygen. Bakit? Siyempre, may makakasaya. Okay? Kasi continuous po ang paglabas ng oxygen. Unlike dito kay face mask, okay? yung oxygen talaga pumapasok po doon sa may uh, respiratory system ng pasyente natin. About 40 to 60% na pumapasok na oxygen kay client. And as you can see, meron pong butas, parehas na, parehong gilid. Para saan yan? Okay, para po yan sa may carbon dioxide. Para po pagka huminga yung pasyente, nag-exhale, may lalabas din yung carbon dioxide. What else? So, we have the reservoir, nasal cannula. This one is also call, called the oxymizer. Okay, bakit po siya tinawag na oxymizer or conserving devices? So, kapag ang client nag-breathe in or nag-inhale, dun lamang lalabas yung oxygen. So, kung hindi po siya nag-inhale, walang lalabas na oxygen. Ganun kaganda po ang oximizer. So, meaning to say, 100% po yung pumapasok na oxygen sa kanya. Kasi pag nag-inhale lang siya, dun lamang magkakaroon ng oxygen. Okay, here are some examples of the cannula. So, in the first picture, we have the nasal cannula. Here, we have the mustache, reservoir nasal cannula. Okay, reservoir cannula po yan. Okay, medyo parang mustache, kaya siya tinabog ng mustache. Okay, meron kasing cylinder po rito yan. Okay, para sa humidification ng oxygen din. Okay, the other one, this is what we call the pendant reservoir nasal cannula. Okay, so oximizer din po itong dalawa na to. Next, this one, this is the non-rebreather mask. Okay, bakit non-rebreather? As you can see here, meron pong plastic. Okay, non-rebreather mask. And then, this one, of course, familiar na kayo, already told you, this is the Venturi mask. Okay, high flow system po ito. Okay, next, let's now talk, uh, let's now have a return demonstration, okay, of the administering oxygen via nasal cannula and via mask. So, these are the checklist. So, we have here the goal, equipment, and then the implementations. Okay, I'll show you a video na lang, okay, my video. Sa ganun, mas madali po sa atin ang discussion. So, for now, this is the end of the slide for the uh, discussion ng oxygenation. The main goal here is to make the patient exhibit an oxygen saturation level uh, within the normal or acceptable parameter. So, meaning to say, once na ma-achieve po natin yung normal oxygen saturation ng client natin, then our goal has been met. Okay, how about the equipment na kakailangan natin dito? We have to check for the oxygen delivery device. High flow or low flow ba ang gagamitin natin? What else? Oxygen tubings. For this procedure, already prepared a nasal cannula. Also, I have here a mask. Okay. What else? Uh, we're also going to need a humidifier. I already discussed it to you. What else? Oxygen saturation. Sa may wall ba? Or are we going to use the tank? What else? Oxygen flow meter. Para sa ganun, malaman natin or ma-measure natin kung gano'n ba kadami or kabilis ang ibibigay natin ng oxygen sa may pasyente po natin. What else? Hmm. Ano? We're also gonna need an appropriate room signs. The no smoking sign para po sa may room ng client natin. Okay? How about implementation? Well, you have we have to bring the necessary equipment in the bedside of our client. So, okay, I have here the nasal cannula and as I've told you, the mask. Then perform hand hygiene. Okay, hand washing. Then identify our client. Hi, sir. Good afternoon. I'm Johnny Balneo. May I know your name, sir? The name of our client is Juno. I already discussed with you that there are different ways para ma-check po natin ang identity ng our client. We can simply check the chart of our client. We can also check the door tag, the bed tag, or we can also check for the wrist tag of our client. Or yung pinakamas madali, we can just simply ask our client. What else? Close the curtain and or the doors if necessary. Again, if necessary. Or we can simply ask our client kung okay lang ba na isara natin. Bahat. Okay, don't forget, huwag po natin ilalak yung pintuan ng pasyente natin. Okay, what else? Uh, explain to our client what we're going to do, why is it necessary, and how our client can uh, participate in this procedure. Next, place the no smoking sign, okay, dun sa may pintuan ng, ng ating pasyente. Okay, what else? 
connect the nasal cannula or the mass with humidification and adjust the flow rate as ordered by the doctor. Pero usually guys, kung walang order si doc tapos nag-manifest ang client natin na nahihirapan silang huminga at bumaba ang kanilang otosat, tandaan, we can do or we can perform administration of oxygen even without the order of the doctor. Tandaan natin because this is what? Emergency case. Kapag bumaba ang otosat niyan. Okay? Pero usually, ang ginagawa namin dito, we only give uh, 2 to 3 liters per minute okay, ng oxygen. Bakit? Kasi yun yung we can, yun yung mo consider natin na normal. Okay, what else? Mm, check if there is a flow of oxygen out in the prongs. So if if the oxygen tubes or this uh, nasal cannula has been connected in the source, can be in the tank or dun sa may uh, wall ng pasyente natin, okay, once na na-open na natin yung source, let us check kung meron ba talagang lumalabas na hangin. If yes, then meaning to say, connected po ito at saka patent, wala pong bara yung oxygen uh, tubes po natin, the nasal cannula. Okay, what else? Uh, place the prongs in patients, nostrils, and place the tubing over and behind each ear with adjuster under the chin. Now, as you can see here, okay, ito yung magiging landmark natin. Nakikita nyo naman ito, right? Meron ditong flap. Okay, there's a flap here at the, nose, uh, at the nasal prongs. Okay, ito yung magiging, okay, lakit ko lang, yan. As you can see here, meron ditong, ayan, merong flap dito. Ito yung magiging indicator natin na ito dapat ay nasa baba. Okay? Pagka nakaganyan siya, nasa taas, itong indicator natin, mali po ang pagpasok natin ng nasal prongs. So, it should be like this. Nasa baba, dapat itong flap na to. Okay? Then, ilagay natin doon sa may nostrils na ang pasyente po natin. Okay? And then, the tubes here should be placed behind each ear. Lagay dito. At ilagay din doon sa may kabila. And then, adjust natin yung adjuster. Sa ganon, snug and fit yung tubes po natin. Sa ganon, konting galaw, hindi mauhulog yung tubes natin. But don't forget. Okay, as you can see here. So, okay na ba yung pagkakaigpet? Hindi masyadong maigpet? Okay lang ba sa inyo? There's no irritation in here. If the patient says yes, SS pa rin po natin. It should be uh, snug, okay, but not too tight. Okay, fitted din dapat siya, pero not too tight. Bakit? It can cause skin irritation. Okay, so that's how you put a nasal cannula. But there's also another one, yung mas madali, and you can also try to do this one. Ang gagawin lang natin is, okay, ilalagay lang natin itong nasal prong sa may nostrils, of course, and then the adjuster will be placed at the back of the head. Then, dito na natin siya i-adjust. Okay, we can ask our client, Hey, sir, okay lang po ba? Wala po bang, hindi uh, po ba masyadong masikip? Is it not so tight? Okay lang po ba sa inyo? Pagkaka higpit ng ating nasal cannula, the patient says yes, then we're good to go. That is another way to place the nasal cannula. Okay, so how about the mass? Okay, pa paano naman maglagay na itong mass? I'll just use maybe this one, yung, yung tube na nakakabit. Okay, madali lang naman to. Okay, I'll just remove first this one. Ang pag-remove na ito, syempre, tanggalin, uh, luwagan nyo lang yung adjuster. Nasa ganun, hindi mahirap tanggalin sa may pasyente natin. Okay? Ang pagkakabit lamang na itong uh, mask is, uh, you have to ask your client to uh, close the mouth muna. Nasa ganun, mag-fit po, mabuti yung mask. Okay? Then, uh, lag lagay lang natin itong tali o itong uh, adjuster sa may likod. Adjust natin, and that's it. Good to go na po yan. Okay? Dapat nasa iba ba, yung tube, and then as you can see here, meron po itong metal. Okay, this metal will serve uh, to fit this one sa my nose bridge. Okay? This one. And as you can see rin, sa mga uh, oxygen mask, meron pong butas yan sa may magkabilang gilid. Okay, nasa ganun, lumabas din po yung carbon dioxide na inilalabas ng pasyente natin. Okay, what else? So, once na i-place na natin yung uh, nasal cannula or the mask to our client, we have to encourage our client to breathe in sa may nose with the mouth closed. Okay, try nyo po mong huminga, sir, gamit po ang ilong, sarado ang bibig. Okay, kung kaya ng pasyente yon, 
then we're good to go. Okay? Para saan po ba yan? Para ma-insure natin na talaga na, na humihin niya po siya dun sa kanyang ilong. Okay, what else? In uh, reassess the patient's uh, respiratory status, we can check for the lung sounds. Pwede tayo dyan mag-check. We can auscultate, we can uh, palpate, we can uh, percast, okay, the, uh, the chest of our patient. Tang sa ganun, nakita po natin the status of our client. The respiratory, respiratory status, I mean. Okay, uh, what else? Mm, remove the PPE, kung gumamit man tayo, then perform hand hygiene. And then document the procedure. You have the document kung ano ba yung ginamit mo sa may pasyente mo. Is it the nasal cannula or the mass? Okay? Nai-discuss ko na rin naman sa inyo kung bakit uh, nasal cannula ang magandang gamitin or mass ang magandang gamitin. Okay? Na-discuss ko naman sa inyo yan. What else? Uh, aside from the documentation, addition lang, once na naginamit na po natin yung mass or the nasal cannula, be sure to clean this one. Okay? According to Kashir, if I'm not mistaken, you have to clean it every 8 hours. Okay? And then be sure na uh, patent, okay, meron, uh, wala pong blockage dun sa may, uh, what do you call this one, the nasal prompts. Okay? And be sure na linisin natin to with the glove hands. Then reassess the patient's skin. Baka naman kasi nagkakaroon na ng irritation. Check for the redness or pain or some sort of irritation sa may skin ng pasyente natin kung saan nakakabit yung nasal cannula or yung face mask natin. And that's it guys, as simple as that. Ganun lang po kadali ang pagkakabit or pag administer ng oxygen sa may pasyente natin via mass or via nasal cannula. That's it guys. Thank you.